So today what I really wanted to do was show off my vinyl collection so far. These are the LPs that I own myself. Now I do have um, a, a very kind of small collection and it really is only my favourite albums that I actually buy on vinyl. I do have a record player which is a bit rubbish to be honest. It's only kind of very small, very basic and I, it's not it's broken as well to a certain extent so what I really want to do is get a, a really good decent record player and sound system to play these on but I've, I just wanted to show you what I actually have so first of all and this is the uh, the vinyl which I did a video for previously I have um, Danger Mouse and Sparkle Horse present Dark Knight of the Soul this is the album featuring lots of different artists including obviously Sparkle Horse and James Mercer the lead singer of The Shins and um, people like Iggy Pop and just a, a load of different artists contributed to this and David Lynch the filmmaker um, did all the pho photography work for it he also sings um, in one of the songs I think and, and wrote the lyrics to a couple of them very good album one of my favourites very unique and highly recommended if you want to see my thoughts fleshed out on this and also a, a better look at the album um, check out the video which I posted a couple of weeks ago we then move on to um, a band which, up until this album, I could really take them or leave them. I was never a, a huge fan, although I did like the music, but I, I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to them. And that is uh, Bell and Sebastian. And they released um, Write About Love while I was actually over in the States uh, visiting Do Not Take It Seriously and Sergeant Pepper 1138 here on YouTube. This album was released while I was over there. I bought a CD, got home and listened to it, and it quickly became one of my favourite albums. I absolutely love this album. A lot of people say that um, Bell and Sebastian are, are twee and, you know, kind of shallow and that it's just pop music. But um, I've never thought that about the music. Like I say, I've never been a massive fan, but I've never found them to be just twee and shallow and stuff. I've always, you know, appreciated the deeper meaning behind the songs, and I think this album is a perfect example of that. It is absolutely fantastic, and while it does have that kind of poppy um, edge to it, these songs are easy to listen to, and, and you know, like, you, you can tap your feet to them. They also, the lyrics are very well written, and I, I actually think Carey Mulligan, the actress um, did some of the vocal work for this album but it is brilliant and it's so much more than what I feel Bell, Bell and Sebastian's previous albums have been. This, I, I love every song on this album and I cannot recommend it enough. I, I honestly think you should go out and listen to Write About Love, it's, it's brilliant. Um, that brings me on to uh, Broken Bells. This is the band that Danger Mouse created with James Mercer, the lead singer of The Shins. Shins being my favourite band. I'm actually wearing a Shins t-shirt now. Broken Bells is a peculiar beast. It's very much a mixture of Danger Mouse and The Shins. It's both those styles in one, and it's it's kind of easy listening. It's good background music. Now, while it doesn't do anything different like Dark Knight of the Soul did, it's a very safe album. It, they really don't do much with the talent that they had. That's not to say the songs aren't good, because they are good. I thoroughly love <laughs> Danger Mouse and James Mercer, so I can listen to this album over and over again, but it's not as revolutionary as I was expecting it to be, but I do recommend it to any fans of Danger Mouse or The Shins. Um, that brings me on to uh, the next two albums, actually. Uh, two of my favourite albums, as you know, as I just mentioned, The Shins are my favourite band. I picked up Wincing the Nice Away uh, by The Shins. This is their third album, and to be honest, they're probably the best of the three. Just about every song on here is a masterpiece. Uh, standouts include uh, Sleeping Lessons, Australia, Phantom Limb, Red Rabbits, Turn On Me, Spilt Needles, A Comedy Piece. Like, see, every, every song is a masterpiece in its own right. It's very kind of um, kaleidoscopic indie rock pop music in this album, but it's very well written. Uh, the lyrics, especially in Phantom Limb, are absolutely brilliant. Phantom Limb is a song, along with Right About Love on the Bell and Sebastian album, that the you know is really about working a job that you hate just to get by, and I really appreciate that. You know, I've I. You know, don't. I've worked jobs in the past that I haven't particularly enjoyed, and I really, you know, relate to these songs in a big, big bad way, which I imagine a lot of listeners would. So that's Winting the Night Away, and the other Shins album. I believe this was the second album, and that shoots too narrow, which 
is another, it's a masterpiece, it really is, as you can see there, it opens out. This has got um, some standout songs on it, such as Kissing the Lipless, I, I really, really like, and, and Saint Simon as well is a brilliant shin song. I actually walked into um, a bar, I went to a, a gig in Manchester, the Euro Cultured Street Festival, and this bar was playing Saint Simon by Shins at full blast. And I walked down, I was like, absolutely love it. You know, it was such a good atmosphere, it was brilliant. The, the Shins just makes people happy. So that's uh, Shoots Too Narrow, uh, another one of my favourite albums. And that brings me on to um, a vinyl which I got recently on eBay, actually, because. I, it's a, an album I hadn't listened to until this year, and it was recommended to me by a, a, well a few people. My um, girlfriend Laura, um, Liam, DVD Weasel on YouTube, and my friend Luke, who I work with in, in my office, all three of them recommended this album to me, and that is In the Aeroplane Over the Sea by Neutral Milk Hotel. I bought the CD, put it on my iPod, and uh, listened to it... Um, on the way down to the Becoming YouTube Stars event in London while I was on the train I listened to the entire album and I have to say as an album, as as a narrative, it's brilliant. It's one of the most consistent, brilliant albums I think I've ever listened to and it has a, a few standout songs on this. The, the best song on the album is probably In the Aeroplane Over the Sea. Uh, the a standout song is King of Carrot Flowers Parts 1, 2 and 3 and also Holland 1945 is a fantastic song where it, they have a bit of more of a rock and roll edge to that song. You can see there's the uh, reverse cover art as well. Um, it's a brilliant album and it was apparently written about Anne Frank, which obviously the song Holland 1945 is a bit of a giveaway, but um, yeah, listening to it, it does tell quite a, a powerful story and it's very dreamlike in its lyrics. Uh, the, the lyrics that they they have in these songs remind me of dreams that I've had in the past. It's really, it's such a unique album and it's again a mix of like acoustic uh, indie songs but with um, also kind of a rock and roll edge halfway through and any song that uses the, uh, the phrase semen covered mountains is fine by me. I think that was quite hilarious, but um, I, I love this album, so that's In the Aeroplane Over the Sea. One other thing I wanted to show you guys was um, I actually got uh, recently an iPod Classic, the uh, the latest model, to keep all of my songs on because I, I got to a point where I have like two and a half thousand which had maxed out my um, iPhone and, and iPod Nano. So I've given my iPod Nano to my dad and I got myself an iPod Classic um, which I absolutely adore. It's 160 gig, so which basically means it's never going to be filled. And it was about 190 pounds. I got the silver one, but I also got a leather, a leather uh, like case with it, which is pretty cool. It leaves the wheel uncovered, but it's got like a plastic thing to protect the screen, and it, it's very kind of tight form fitting so it's not bulky it's, it's just like the regular iPod size which is handy for me and um, I can still fit in the iPod holder in my car uh, just to have a look I actually got the silver um, iPod classic I, I preferred it to the black everything I get is always black so it's something a bit different so I've got the silver one how well that can show it's a bit bright here isn't it um, so there it is it's a fantastic piece of kit I um, absolutely love it. And I read a lot of reviews before I got this and people were complaining about the volume cap that the European market has on iPods. And I, I was really worried about that, but I took the plunge anyway. And I have to say, the volume cap's barely noticeable, to be quite honest. I turned this up to max volume and I could not, it was painful. I couldn't listen to it on max. So I w I'm quite content with um, with this, how it is. The, if you're thinking about getting an iPod Classic and the volume cap worries you, don't let it because it's still incredibly loud uh, with the volume cap and I really didn't see a problem with it so and I like to listen to my music loud which is probably one of the reasons I'm a bit deaf <laughs> but um, yeah iPod classic fully really recommended it's a lot of money but it's well worth it if you have a, a large CD collection or you know a big iTunes library so that's the iPod classic anyway um, thanks a lot for watching this video I know it's something a little bit different to what I usually do but I just wanted to show you my vinyl collection so thanks to everybody who watches rates comments and subscribes. If if any of you want to show off your CD or vinyl collections, talk about your favourite bands or albums, please post video responses to this video. You know, I look forward to, to seeing your responses. Anyway.
anyway, um, check in next time. I don't know what I'll be doing next time. Maybe some graphic novel reviews. Anyway, this is Civilian Snowman signing out. I'll see you later. Bye.